بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین وصل اللہ وسلم علی نبینا محمد وعلی آلہ وصحبہ وسلم اما بعد Continuing on in our study of some of the some basic fiqh regarding a hadith dealing with tahara, dealing with purification. We reach the fourth hadith and again the minhaj or the methodology we're going to go with this uh, very brief study is we're using the text Umdat Ahkam and talking and discussing some of the issues related to uh, these hadith which deal with tahara, which deal with purification, which every Muslim should know. Every Muslim needs to know and have an idea on how to practice their religion and know the issues of tahara, know the issues of purity. Because tahara, as we studied in the first hadith, is the miftah as-salat, or it is the, the key to prayer. And it is the one of the conditions for making prayer is purification, is that a person is on tahara, that they're free from the minor and major impurities, and that they have made wudu or ghusl if necessary, if they have the major impurities, and so that they are able to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the salat, the prayer, is the sila or it is the it is the relationship between the person or human being and their lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qala al musannif rahimahullah ta'ala al hadith al rabi' an abi hurairata radiyallahu ta'ala anhu anna rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal idha tawadda ahadakum fal yajal fi anfihi ma in thumma la yastantir wa man yastajmira wa man istajmira fal yutir wida istaykada ahadakum min nawmihi fal yagsil yadayhi qabla an yurkhiluhuma fil ina'i thalathan فَإِنَّ أَحَدَكُمْ لَا يَدْرِ أَيْنَ بَاتَتْ يَدْهُ وَفِي لَفْتْ لِمُسْلِمْ فَلْيَسْتَنْشَقْ بِمَنْ خِرَيْهِ مِنَ الْمَاءِ وَفِي لَذْ مَنْ تَوَضَّأَ فَلْيَسْتَنْشَقْ Bukhari wa Muslim In this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said as was narrated by Abu Huraira رضي الله تلع عنه he said that the Prophet ﷺ, the Messenger of Allah ﷺ said, If one of you makes wudu, if one of you uh, performs the ablution, then they should put water in, in his nose. Meaning that when a person makes ablution, that they should sniff water in their nose. Then blow it out. And whoever has to make istijmar. Istijmar is when we use stones or that which is pure in the place of stones in order to clean ourselves, clean our private parts, either from ikramakumullah, uh, either, either from urination or either from defecation or anything that comes from those two parts, those two body parts. So it is using stones, three stones uh, is called istijmar, using three stones or an odd number. So the Prophet ﷺ said, وَمَنْ إِسْتَجْمَرَ فَلْيُؤْتِرْ So whoever makes istijmar, they, that they use, they clean their private parts with stones, then they should do it an odd number of times. And the least amount of that, as the Prophet ﷺ, he's, uh, is, is three stones. So it should be an odd number, and the least amount is three. With the stake of the ahadakum min nomihi fil yagsil yadehi kabla in yurkhilahuma fil inai thalathan. So if one of you awakens from sleep, then he should wash his hands three times before entering them in the water container, meaning the water container you're going to make wudu with. And the Prophet ﷺ said, For verily one of you does not know where his hands have been when he was sleeping. And this was related in Bukhari and Muslim. And in the narration in Muslim, 
The Prophet ﷺ said, فَلِيَسْتَنْشَقْ بِمُنْ خَرَيْهِ مِنَ الْمَاءِ Then he should uh, breathe in water through his nose. And then in the lev or the narration of Bukhari, he said, مَنْ تَوَضَّى فَلِيَسْتَنْشَقْ The one who makes wudu, who performs the abol abolution, they should take water in their nose. In this hadith of the Prophet wasallam, there are immense benefits that Shaykh Ali Bassam rahimahullah ta'ala that he mentioned. And he said that in general this hadith, it, it, it gives us uh, several ahkam or rulings pertaining to making the wudu. And one of the first things he mentioned before getting into what we gain from this hadith, he mentioned the differences of opinion with, uh, with the ulama with one of the issues in this hadith. He said, اَخْتَلَفَ ulama fi nom الَّذِي يَشْرَعْ بَعْدَهُ غُسْلَ yad." So he said that the scholars, they differed with regards to the to when a person sleeps when uh, what type of sleep entails having to wash one's hands one of the things the ulama differed is in the type of sleep is it any sleep some of them say like Imam Shafi'i and the Jamhur, meaning majority of the scholars say that it is after every sleep meaning if a person uh, sleeps then they should wash their hands when they wake up before making wudu. So this is the majority opinion. Another group of ulama like Imam Ahmed and Imam uh, Dawood of Zahiri, which is of the Madhab of Zahiriya, that they say that this is this is uh, specifically restricted to the sleep which has to do with sleeping at night because the Prophet Sallallahu said فَإِنَّ أَحَدَكُمْ لَا يَدْرِ أَيْنَ بَاتَتْ يَدْهُ The Prophet Sallallahu said and verily because verily one of you does not know uh, where his hands have been when he slept uh, at night because the term batat here in the hadith batat yad that al mubit that it is in in the Arabic language as the the Sheikh explains he said haqiqat al mubit yakun min nom al layl that the reality uh, the real bat when we use the term bat we're referring to something that takes place at night. So Mubit, the, re the reality of Mubit is that this has to do with the sleep that take place, takes place at night. Because of this fact, Imam Ahmed and Imam uh, uh, Dawood al-Zahari, that they took the, held the view that when this, when a person wakes up from the night sleep, then they must make, uh, they must wash their hands before making wudu. Jamhur, majority of the scholars have a different opinion to this and they say that a person should uh, wash their hands anytime they have slept. If they have slept, when you wake up, even if it's an afternoon nap, regardless if it's a midday nap, or if it's at night or whenever, that whenever you wake up, you should wash your hands before making wudu, if you're going to make wudu. Another issue that the ulama uh, differed about with regards to this hadith is whether it is washing the hands is it mustahab meaning it's recommended or is it wajib okay and so some of the scholars they say for the jamhur majority of the scholars as we mentioned imam shafi in the jamhur they say that it's from any sleep that you should make uh you should wash your hands and they say it's mustahab that it is recommended not that it's wajib and those imams like uh as we mentioned imam ahmed and other than him that they they say that it is wajib and this is also the madhab of the Zahiriya. And without getting in depth with their qawl, we just wanted to give an idea about some of the differences and how the scholars look at 
uh, different masail, different issues, even regarding the same hadith. And this is very pertinent to fiqh. This is something very important for us to understanding when studying fiqh. That fiqh, as Ibn Uthaymeen says, rahimahullah ta'ala, that majority of the issues in fiqh, of masail of fiqh, that they are dhaniya. That they are not, that they are um, related to those to what a person or what the the mujtahideen, what those fuqaha, those ulama of fiqh and jurisprudence, those people who have the knowledge, who understand the text, who have memorized the text, and know how to take the adilla, the evidences from the text, and how to use those texts and the adilla properly, and understand the Arabic language, that those people, that they have differences of opinion with regards to these ish issues and that their opinions uh, most of the masail in fiqh are dhaniya meaning that it it is what the fuqaha it's not a black and white issue that what they what they believe to be most correct from the text so one scholar may look at the ling linguistic uh, the linguistic aspects of the text to formulate his opinion more than another scholar. Another scholar may look at other things. And so in this issue, the reason I wanted to highlight this issue is it shows us how how the scholars deal with those differences and how they come up with their ahkam because from those differences with understanding the language or using the language or what have you, some of them deduce that, for example, in this issue, that it's an obligation to uh, wash one's hands before making wudu, before putting your hands in water and making wudu. Another group say, no, it's mustahab. After you slept, and this is the majority opinion, that after you slept, it is mustahab, it is recommended. And they're both looking at the same evidence, but they're looking at it in a slightly different way. Some of them tend to be more, as we mentioned, Imam Ahmed and the Zahiriya Madhab, they tend to look at the text uh, more, um, more with its apparent meaning, whereas some of the other madhabs and some of the other imams, especially in this particular issue, tend to look at the illa, meaning the reason, uh, the reason why uh, it might be uh, that a person might uh, needs to clean their hands. So they're they're looking into the text and looking at the reasons, not just what the apparent meaning is. Whereas Imam Ahmed and Imam uh, Dawood al-Zahari are looking more at the apparent meaning of the nas, because the Prophet wasallam in this text he said. وَإِذَا إِسْتَيْكَذَ أَحَدَكُمْ مِنْ نَوْمِهِ فَلْيَغْسِلْ And this text means that the Prophet ﷺ, he's using when he said فَلْيَغْسِلْ That means this is, uh, it's an amr, it's a command. And, and mostly in the sh Sharia, this is the, the foundation, that when there's a commandment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qur'an, or there's a commandment from the Prophet ﷺ in, in the uh, authentic hadith, to do something, then that it is wajib. So they say, Al-Amr Yufid Al-Wujub. That when there's a commandment, that what we deduce from that, the asl, the foundation of that, is that it's an obligation. Unless another text comes up to support that it takes that obligation to something that's a recommendation. So those are some fiqh principles just to give us an idea about uh, how to deal with these texts and we'll continually use these principles in order to give us a better understanding of just basic fiqh and how the ulama think and how to understand our religion uh, better bi'idhnillah ta'ala and hopefully it won't be confusing so I'll do my best bi'idhnillah ta'ala to explain it as clear as possible and so in this text, those are some of the issues that the ulama, they differ all over. And my, 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 me, myself, I tend to go with the jamhur on this, the majority of the scholars, that it is mustahab, that it is not an obligation to wash your hands, but rather that it is mustahab, that it is recommended. And so especially, in the, and uh, Ali Bassam, he mentions also related to this hadith, that this is especially true because during the time of the Prophet ﷺ, they used containers to make wudu. 
and to make ghusl. They didn't have uh, running faucets, obviously. So, it made more sense. So this gives us the illa, what we're talking about, the reason. It made sense in order when a person wakes up and they don't know where their hands were, maybe their hands were in their private parts, when they were sleeping or what have you, and maybe there's some najasa, maybe there's something impure. So uh, this is the need, the Prophet ﷺ, this is what the ulama, they deduce from this hadith, they, they uh, look for the hikmah inside there. That And, and it also comes in the nuts because the Prophet ﷺ said, verily one of you doesn't know where his hands have been when he was sleeping. So it lets us know, that, so the, in this hadith, the wisdom for washing your hand is inside the hadith. The Prophet ﷺ, he gave you the hukum, the ruling, and then after that he came with the illa. He gave you the reason for that hukum. Because he said, for verily, one of you does not know where his hands have been when he was sleeping. So, with keeping that in mind, uh, during the time of the Prophet ﷺ, they used containers, so like buckets and things like this, and they used to dip their hand in, and so this is why the Prophet ﷺ ordered, he said, to wash your hands three times before dipping your hands in the container. Maybe making another smaller container, or maybe you have a water thing, and you wash your hand outside the container three times and then dip your hand in. So it's become common practice. A lot of people, when they make wudu, they wash their hands in their sink anyway. So then you're getting that aspect of the sunnah. You're getting the ajr. And as we said, the majority say that that's mustahab, that that's not an obligation. Okay? So you're getting that ajr of following the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Let's go to look, let's look at what Shaykh Ali Bassam, Alama Ali Bassam, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, what he said regarding uh, this hadith. Some of the benefits we gain from this hadith he said, Wujub al istinshaq wal istintar. He said it's an obligation that what we get from this hadith is that it's an obligation to inhale water and blow it out. Because the Prophet ﷺ commanded, he said in here, Thumma la istintar. So he said uh, that a person should breathe in water and then blow it out. And he did this, it was in the, in the Arabic language, in the Sigal al Amr, that he said, you know, there's a lam al amr on this verb. So it said, لِيَسْتَنْشَقْ So, وَلِيَسْتَنْثِرْ So letting us know that it was a command, then blow it out. So from this, uh, Shaykh Ali Bassam, rahimahullah ta'ala, he says it's an obligation to, to inhale water and blow it out. And then Imam Nawawi, he also related the statement of Imam Nawawi, rahimahullah ta'ala. He said that this is clear evidence, this hadith is clear evidence that uh, that taking in water and blowing it out, uh, for taking in water and blowing it out. Also, as another evidence, uh, Sheikh Ali Bassam, rahimahullah ta'ala, said, because the, the, the nose is part of the face. So the nose is part of the face in wudu. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and this is taken from this hadith, and also from the ayat, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah Taala says, and wash your faces. So in the ayat of wudu in Surah uh, Maida, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala commands us about when we learn about the sifat or the characteristics of how to make wudu from the Quran. It's general. It's general, and Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala commands fagsilu wujuukum. Wash your faces. And Allah Taala didn't mention the nose. But in this hadith, this hadith gives us the khas. It gives us, it specifies for us that the nose is a part of the face because the Prophet Sallallahu said and is included in that ayat because the Prophet Sallallahu illustrated for us how to make that wudu that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala described generally the sunnah the sunnah explained that because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said uh, he said we the ma'in so take water in your nose then blow it out he said when you make wudu so that lets us know that the nose is included in the general uh characteristic of the face, or it's a part of the face. Another thing uh, the Shaykh mentioned, Rahimullah Ta'ala, he said, also this hadith, it shows for us that it is, um, that it is from the sunnah 
that a person should make witr when making istijmar. So when cleaning yourself, cleaning your private parts, say for example, a person who likes to go out hiking or a person just has no water, you have no water and you need to make istinja, you went to the bathroom at Karamakum Allah and you have no water, what do you do? And this is why this shows us the completeness and beauty of Islam. The Prophet ﷺ let us know that what you do is you make istijmar. istijmar. So the Prophet ﷺ said, وَمَنْ أَسْتَجْمَرَ فِلْيُطِرْ So whoever makes istijmar, meaning to use three stones at least, فِلْيُطِرْ Then he should make witr. So the Prophet ﷺ said, and this is a shart, this is a condition, he said, if you need to make uh, you need to clean your private parts with other than water, then do it with three. Un, uh, do it on witr. Witr meaning uh, an odd number. And then in another, uh, uh, the Prophet ﷺ also said, let us know that the lowest amount of witr for this is three. So nothing less than three. So you should never use one stone. Unless all you can find is one pure stone or one pure piece of cloth or one piece of thing and you use three sides of it. I asked one of those scholars and he said you can use three sides of it. It's not necessarily that you necessarily have exactly three. If you can't find three, what if you're out in the woods? Camping, hiking, whatever, and you, you, you can only find one clean stone around you or one leaf or whatever. And so you can use uh, use it, but use the three sides if you find a stone or something like this. Another benefit we gain from this hadith is that Ibn Hajr al Askalani, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, he said that a group uh, of, of the scholars abstracted from this hadith that the Places that you make istinja, that you usually use water to clean yourself, your private parts, that it is uh, it's permissible to, uh, or, or that it is mishru, and that you should should um, you know continue to remove that najasa with whatever. Uh, whatever you're using to clean it with. So, of course, if you have water, you want to get all the najasa or as much as you can. That's 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 possible, okay. And if you are making istijmar, you want to clean it as best as you can and try to end on a on an odd number. And that doesn't mean that if there's a little bit of left, you're it means that you're excused. You're excused. If a little bit of left, it's kind of beyond your ability. There's a little bit left on you, a little bit in this najasa. You've done your best, but there's just, you know, because you can only, as we can imagine, with a stone, you can only get yourself so clean as far as removing. It's not gonna, going to be as perfect as using water. But the Sharia is is broad and, and has something for all of us and for every situation show it shows us that that's permissible. And the scholars they mention also from this hadith that it also shows us that the most camel, the most uh, the best way, the most complete way of cleaning yourself is to use like it, to make istijmar wa istinja at the same time to use both so meaning to use if you if you're in the bathroom because in our time obviously we don't use that unless we're outside or what have you using making a istijmar so in our homes a lot of times we have tissue we have toilet paper what have you so if you're going to use three pieces of toilet paper then wetting them so then that's the completeness then you're getting the 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 blessing and the ajr of using the complete sunnah because you're using both both that the Prophet Sallallahu Wasallam uh, ordered us to do, to make istijmar and is istij, uh, istinja. You're using both and you're cleaning yourself even more completely. Another um, benefit that the Shaykh mentioned is that this hadith also shows us the that it is uh, legislated or from the religion to clean one's hands after they have, uh, have, after they have woken up from sleep and we mentioned already the differences of opinion with the ulama. Another thing with this is uh, 
Sheikh Ali Basam rahimahullah ta'ala, he says that it's an obligation, this is his view, wudu wudu min an He said that it's an obligation to make wudu uh, after you sleep. So this is the Sheikh's uh, qawl there. And he didn't explain whether that is if you're, ju- you're preparing for salat or what have you. But he, he just says, wudu 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 min an so th- this is the Shaykh's um, his view regarding that Rahimahullah Ta'ala uh, another benefit gained from this hadith is that this hadith also illustrates for us the prohibition of putting your hands in the bucket to wash to make a ghusl or to make wudu that it's prohibited to do it uh, if you haven't washed your hands first when you've cu- when you've awakened a- after being after having awoken okay so before you put your hands in a bucket to make wudu in case you're using a water container or to make ghusl then you mu- you must uh, it's prohibited to just do it automatically put your hands maybe your hands have some najasa maybe they have something on them it's prohibited to do it automatically without washing your hands and then the Sheikh mentions, he said, the scholars, they differ. He said, وَهُوَ إِمَّا لِتَحْرِيمِ أَوْ لِلْكَرَهِيَةِ Meaning that some of the scholars say that it is tahrim, it's haram to do it. It's haram to if you just woke up and you put your hands in a water container and you just start making wudu or ghusl. Some of them say it's haram. Some say, no, it is uh, makru, it's disliked. Meaning that you will not incur sin, but this is something disliked. So they both, they, the, the scholars agree that you should, it's at least mustahab, uh, or it's wajib. Some of them say it's an obligation. So you should clean your hands before you put your hands in a water container to make uh, wudu. Another benefit the Sheikh mentioned is uh, and we already mentioned that about the reason for this and this was also mentioned in the hadith and he mentioned also he said uh, so the reason for washing the hands is for nadafa is for keeping your hands clean he said but the ruling of this is general Lakin al hukum lil ghalib. He said the ruling is pertaining to that which is general because generally people, uh, you know, may, maybe they touch themselves, they don't know where their hands were when they were sleeping or what have you. So this is why he says you must wash your hands. And he said even if you wore gloves or you had your hands in a plastic bag, he said even if that, you, you must wash your hands. Because he said the hukum lil ghalib. So that's the sheikh's. Uh, view on that so he's saying that it's an obligation so that this is ta'abudi that this is something that is related to worship that you're washing your hands for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the Prophet sallallahu ordered you so since this is related to ibadah then we don't have to look at the reason we're following the Prophet sallallahu he ordered us to do it and we're following that command that's what they mean by ta'abudi that when you do certain things that you don't have to look for the reason for but you do it the Prophet sallallahu said this, okay, I'm doing this for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as an act of worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so that's why the Shaykh said, even if you wear gloves, even if you have plastic on your hands when you're sleeping, he says it's still an obligation to uh, wash your hands before putting your hands in your water container. And those are just some of the benefits and the main benefits that the Sheikh mentioned. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. And anything I said that was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaytan.